We've been together for almost nine years. We wrote the first draft of Lemon about six years ago. And the first shareable draft came together about five years ago. I'm not, we just kind of started working together. There wasn't really a conversation about it. It just sort of happened. We kind of, our sensibilities, our sense of humor is pretty similar. It's off and a little aggressive and uh, abrasive and uh, stressful. And how we arrive at those is, I would say, what is different. But in terms of like what makes us laugh or what bums us out, it's the same. And when it came time to sort of like arriving at this project together, it was pretty natural for us. And, and to that effect, we're both like very comfortable with fighting and we're both pretty alpha. And so in our writing dynamic, we uh, do those things, and um, and but we, there's a respect for Brett as the actor and for me as the director. And so while there is the shared writing, ultimately I am hearing him out as the performer of the piece and he's hearing me out as the director of the piece. Yes, and and she's the director and it was her idea, her vision, so She's coming to the table with a lot, a lot uh, envisioned <laughs> already. So I, I, I was, I, it, it was an agreement that she would be the leader in the process as the director should be. And when a director comes up to you and says, hey, I have an idea for a starring vehicle <laughs> for you, I, as an actor, you're, you're usually not going to uh, say no. <laughs> Well, you basically watched me fail for 90 minutes, uh, 83 minutes, and it's, um, he's somebody who, I, I mean, to call him a struggling actor is disrespectful towards struggling actors. I mean, he, he really could be in any pr profession and not do, doing well, and not be doing well in it. Um, but it starts out his girlfriend of 10 years leaves him. And he's teaching this like really shitty acting class, and he has a protege uh, acting student. His girlfriend who leaves him is uh, played by Judy Greer. The protege is played by Michael Sarah, and uh, the protege is like the one person who I feel like it, you know, shows that I'm not a complete loser, and. <laughs> And so I'm like very attached to him and like our relationship and stuff like that. And then I end up becoming the face. Should I not reveal that much? Should I? Yeah, I end up becoming the uh, face of this print ad uh, for hepatitis C. Um, and then he he decides to leave my class or he gets this really huge job, this huge acting job and I go crazy. And then the second act, I'm with my really insane Jewish family for Passover Seder, and you sort of get a glimpse into the origin of why I'm so uh, screwed up. And then in the third act, I start dating the makeup artist of the Hepatitis C shoot, who's played by Nia Long. And uh, that doesn't go well either. So it's really, I mean, really we wanted to... Uh, it's a portrait of failure, and uh, and and hopefully we you know, we we hope that people when they see the movie will feel less lonely in their own fears of failure and mediocrity, and uh, it was very much an exorcism for us. The cast is awesome. I, it's so lucky that for my first feature and Brett first first uh, starring role that we were able to assemble such a strong group. Uh, we wrote Michael Sarah's part, Judy Greer's part, John Daly, and Fred Melamed. We had written those parts for them. We'd had relationships with them. And, and so we had sent those actors the script, having known them. And then as far as the rest of the cast, f except for Neil Long and Rhea Perlman, everyone else we had kind of some access to, either having worked with them or having worked with a person who knows a person who knows a person who had worked with them. Our film is unusual and the world is a little bit left of center. And I think that 
why we were able to lure so many great people is they hadn't really done that or played in that space or even if their work say was like kind of pretty straightforward it was in the context of a world that was a little bit exotic and the commitment was super small it's like come and play from anywhere from one day to four days like Megan Mullally and Jeff Garland that was one day of their time yeah. and so it it's not really taking away from them if it was going to be like a piece of trash. Like it would be okay. Like they could live with one day of trash, you know, and um, and people would probably forget that they existed in trash. So I think it didn't take away from them. There wasn't a lot to lose, and they either liked Brett or they liked me or they liked short films that I had made before. And if anything, maybe they were just curious. Like, well, what what is this? We have this fantastic Seder scene. Uh, in the second act of our film, and it's Rhea Perlman, Fred Melamed, David Pamer, Shiri Appleby, Martin Starr, Brett Gellman, uh, there's Elizabeth DeRazzo, Hannah Heller, and then these three children, and, uh, and, and all of these sort of nutty and batty things happen. We shot that and the scene that happens after it, which is a sing-along on the same day, and uh, I don't recommend so many pages in one day, but um, or like so much. Of, you could spend days working on a scene of ten people sitting around a table, and we shot that in like four and a half or six hours. And uh, I definitely feel like I uh, wish we could have shot more of it. Um, but it was no, it's sort of all like a it kind of feels dreamlike now. It's a it was a year ago, like right now. Yeah, actually, I think today or yesterday was one year ago that we had finished shooting. And it feels like a kind of distant memory, that experience. Mine would be the, sort of in the entirety of the piece was getting to work with Brett, actually. That this thing that we birthed together came to be finally and that we got to do that together every day. I, I think the drive to and from work was my favorite because it was like a great time for complaining and a great time for making lists of who we hated. And, uh, and it was just really fun. It was really fun not to hate people. It was really fun to have this kind of bonding, this sort of great bonding for both of us and that no matter how hard it is, making movies is not easy and there are aspects of it that are romantic, but on the whole, it's really, really painful and tough. And so to be able to look across the room and to see my partner in life and also my partner in, in this project and know that ultimately, like, there is at least one other person that's in my corner whose corner I am also in was the best. Your answer won't be as good as mine. <laughs> uh, likewise. Uh, you know, I very much felt like I was her dancer in a lot of ways, and she was my choreographer, and it just was, I, I don't, it was working in a way that I had not worked in uh, ever professionally, and uh, not since college, which was just so composed and deliberate and specific, yet really freeing and really exciting, and it felt dangerous, and it felt, you, 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 you you struggle as an actor and you want to work with all the great directors and it felt amazing to know that oh I, I don't need to I, I really did feel like I don't need to work with another director besides this person you know this person is my favorite director I know I'm biased but somebody who I really believe has a lot of very important things to say and uh, I felt privileged and honored to be able to be in her world that she was creating. Yeah.